You know, if you hate Glocks, you're just going to hate this just as much as you hate every other Glock. And if you love Glocks, you're probably going to love it just as much as you love every Glock. Maybe more. Maybe they're answering some of your needs and your hopes with this pistol. Maybe they're not. I don't know. All I can do is tell you, this is what I see, this is what they've done, and this is what I perceive. <laughs> Okay, welcome to part two, Glock 17 Gen 5. It's all about the range, all about shooting this gun today. So I'm gonna use a lot of magazines. I'm gonna use, obviously, the three magazines that came with the gun. I'm going to use a Magpul P mag. I'm gonna use a Gen 4 mag. I'm going to use fun sticks. So I'm gonna use a little bit of everything and I'm going to shoot a whole bunch of different kinds of ammo through it. Really, really good stuff and some stuff that might be questionable. Not in terms of quality of ammo so much, but just reliability through every kind of gun like aluminum cased and steel cased. Let the fun begin. Before I get started, I want to point out that today I am taking the very first shots at a new steel target. And I'm really happy that this target was provided to me by Tactical AR500 Targets Incorporated. I wanted a, a steel target system that I could use to shoot videos and, and do my range work, but something that I could also offer you guys a discount for and, you know, and all that. So uh, I am super thrilled that Tactical AR500 Targets responded back to me and provided me with this target because quite frankly they were my favorite they were the ones i was hoping that uh, would reply back you got to check out their website they make the coolest targets and i've seen a bunch of them in person uh, last year up at the uh, stone mountain machine gun shoot where they had a, a booth set up and so i'm super thrilled that they sent me this ar550 is the material um, two-thirds uh, sized ADAP target they call it and it's a really ingenious stand system so you can use paper and steel at the same time or either or. Target is 3 8 steel. Um, there's a lot of things I already love about this target system before I've even fired a shot at it. I'm going to do a full review on that target and tell you everything you want to know but I'm going to wait till I've got a whole lot of rounds on it, at least a thousand rounds on that target before I do that. Again, this is going to be the very first so I'm going to use a combination of that new target and traditional paper while I work out this new Glock 17. Starting out with Remington UMC. Why not? That's what I usually start with. Remington upper middle class. I'm going to shoot a lot of different ammo today. Nice. Hey, let's find out how well the ambidextrous left-hand side slide stop works as a release. Oh, hell yeah. It works beautiful. Unlike a lot of recent guns I've tested. Go to paper a little bit. So while I'm shooting today, I'm going to try to answer as many of the questions as I can that I, I've seen people already ask from my previous video on, uh, you know, the the bench view of this gun. Um, Starting with number one, somebody asked, do the, uh, do the Gen 5 magazines still have steel inserts in them? And the answer is yes. Uh, you don't see it up here around the, uh, the mag release 
the mag catch area um, like you did in the Gen 3s and the early Gen 4s, but the feed lips still have it and around the witness holes still has it. This is a previous gen. This is a Gen 4, maybe a Gen 3 magazine. So we'll see how it functions with this one. Magpul PMAG magazine. I can't remember if this is the pre or post recall. Not sure. Nice. Oh, I don't know. Let's try this. <laughs> hey, I told you, man, it's going to be all about shooting. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood to do a whole lot of talking. I just want to shoot this gun. There we go. Well, that was a whole bunch of rounds in a hurry. That was, uh, that was a hundred rounds. So we'll load up a bunch of magazines and go some more. I'm 12 yards back from the tactical AR-500 targets ADAP target system. I've got a paper target over top of the, over front of it, and I've got an orange dot on that. So I'm going to see if I can slow down a little bit and print a nicer group in that orange dot. From a, about 12 yards, and this is a Glock, so I'm going to start with a 6 o'clock hold. And as someone pointed out, and I verified, the rear notch on the Gen 5 sight is wider, 30 thousandths wider. And I think the idea there is to give you a faster acquisition. And it does seem to do just that. Also, the barrel is, I said, more traditional rifling, and that was initially the information that I saw. But to be more specific to what Glock is saying, they're saying it is a hexagonal barrel, or hexagonal, however you want to pronounce that, rather than a polygonal barrel. So, I'm going from polygonal to hexagonal, whatever that means. I like this target. I like to be able to print on paper and hear the ring of steel at the same time. That's pretty cool. Plus, the steel target is small, so you know if you hear that ring, you made a good hit.
Okay, about the trigger. Uh, so I'm like 100 and 150 or more rounds in now, so I'm starting to get an opinion about the trigger. Uh, I like it. It still feels very much like a Glock, but it is crisper. It feels a tiny bit lighter, and I think the internals that I looked at would, would uh, kind of explain that, but uh, it is a little smoother. There's less grit. There's less of that initial, you know, with a Glock, there's always that, that initial pull just felt heavy, you know, uh, and it never felt terribly smooth. The brake is not as loud, crisp, and the reset is not as tactile. So the reset is actually muted. Uh, and, and when you get to the wall, that brake is not quite as, you know, snapping a two by four over your leg type of brake as, as we're used to on the Glock. It's a little softer. It's a quieter, gentler Glock. I don't know, I'm kind of having fun printing a group, so I'm gonna keep doing it for at least another magazine's worth. I don't know if this recoil spring is, uh, in, in addition to being longer, if it's any heavier, or maybe just by virtue of the length, but this feels like it's uh, handling recoil better than Gen 4 or Gen 3. Seems to shoot pretty flat. And I'm not even really trying to hold the muzzle down. Nice. Nice. Have you ever heard of blue bullets? Blue bullets <laughs> look like that. They're blue and they're bullets. Uh, they are polymer coated. So polymer jacketed bullets instead of copper jacketed bullets. So a lot of people are going to these now and trying them out. A lot of competitive shooters and a friend of mine who's a competitor kind of turned me on to it. I have a couple of friends who actually shoot for Blue Bullets. Uh, you know, they're sponsored shooters by Blue Bullets. And so I kept promising I was going to try them out. I bought a couple of bags of like 250 of different calibers and I have yet to try them. So I'm trying them right now. Through the Glock. 17, Gen 5, just for the heck of it. See how it likes the polymer bullets. It ought to, it's a polymer gun, right? I can't imagine Glock would be biased against polymer. Be like a polymer bigot. Good stuff. Well, I can't make it jam yet. Can't make it malfunction. Well, the blue bullets seem to work just excellent, but uh, the only downside to them is it uh, kind of makes it look like you've been intimate with a Smurf. Hey, don't judge me. 
I don't know if it's the lack of finger grooves or what, but the grip feels a lot nicer to me. Feels a lot, um, a lot grippier and I'm able to handle and control the pistol a lot better with this Gen 5, although the stippling is exactly the same as it was on Gen 4. So it's not a different stippling. Again, I think it's just maybe the lack of finger grooves allows me to keep my fingers tight together and put them nice and high up under the, um, the trigger guard and get them where I want them. Maybe that's the secret, I don't know. So it could be that a lot of people are gonna find that maybe the Gen 5 is a more comfortable pistol to grip and shoot and maybe they control it better because of that. Another question that a lot of people may have is about holsters. You know, is it gonna fit in the same holsters I might have for my Gen 4, my Gen 3, uh, Glock 17, Glock 34, such and such? And the answer is, Probably the only real caveat, the only difference, and I have not put a caliper all up and down this thing to get all those dimensions, but the only thing that, that really strikes my eye as being significantly different is the fact that we have this ambidextrous slide stop. So you've got, you know, 50 thousandths more metal sticking out here on this side. I'm wearing a Phobos holster, good old Phobos, right? Go on Amazon, get yourself a Phobos holster for cheap. They work all day long. And this holster stops just shy, which is perfect. So good to go with this holster. Um, you know, if you have a custom Kydex holster, depends on how high the holster maker molded it, whether that may interfere or not. Okay, I promised you guys I was gonna shoot a bunch of stuff. So here is some jacketed hollow point, my favorite carry load, six hour elite performance, 124 grain, jacketed hollow point V crown, big mouth stuff. Let's see if it'll shoot that. Oh yeah, no problem. Steel cased. Tula. No problem. Aluminum cased blazer. There you go. You cannot make this thing fail. Okay, wrapping things up with just a few more different ammos. <laughs> a few more different ammos. Yes, I know grammar. Sig Sauer, 115 grain ball, elite performance. What'd you expect? Freedom Munitions, 124 grain, I think. Might be 115, I don't know.
And last, Magtech. Nice bargain stuff I got on sale at Midway USA. <laughs> got a case of it for cheap. I forget how much though. Magtech, 115 grain ball ammo. This will bring me to about 450 rounds this morning <laughs> through this gun. Probably gonna be done. I'll be back. Four hundred and fifty rounds. No jams, no malfunctions, no stoppages of any kind. Everything fired, everything fed, everything ejected, extracted, all that. And it felt good. I'm going to tell you, it felt nice to shoot this gun. It was very comfortable. I'm still going to put a Talon grip. I've already got the, uh, I already shined the bat light up in the sky to the folks at Talon, and they've got a grip coming my way, rubberized. So I'm going to put a rubber Talon grip on it. I'll probably show you that install just for fun. Um, but it's just, this is a nice grip, you know, right out of the box. If you're if you're a person who doesn't like to have to add grips onto your pistol or whatever, you you may really be happy with this. The corners on the front are still a little square, kind of like, uh, in fact, even more so now without the finger grooves. What you notice is you notice these two corners right here. So you you feel like you're holding a two by four a little bit um, more so than than usual because I think those finger grooves kind of helped round things out or at least give you that feeling. Um, so you do notice that a little bit, but very little. And uh, I found it to be uh, found it to be not annoying at all. There feels like there's a lot more grip now because you don't have those smooth protrusions sticking out in between where some of us, you know, occasionally our finger would ride on those. So overall, I think most of the marketplace is going to, um, is going to be happy to accept the lack of finger grooves. I think that's probably a move in the right direction. Now, whether they're going to go any further than just these two 9mm pistols in Gen 5, we don't know. I will tell you... As a Glock armorer, knowing what I know about Glocks and knowing what I saw inside this pistol, I will tell you that I doubt very seriously this gun built the way it is will handle much more pressure than a 9mm. I don't think it'll handle 40, I don't think it'll handle 357 SIG. Um, sure as heck isn't going to handle 10mm, 45 I'm not sure. Um, so very likely we may only see this configuration in this particular caliber but there still could be a 26 there could still be a 34 uh, and so on so you know there could be more introductions in the gen 5 in 9 millimeter but whether they're going to go to any other caliber who knows uh, i didn't do any real speed loads or i didn't do any kind of you know quick drills or anything like that so i can't tell you whether that magwell really helps Obviously, it's going to. It's a bigger hole, so it's, it's going to help you a little bit with your reloads, whether you need the help or not. Uh, the sight picture was good. As someone had pointed out to me in the comments, it is wider, and I did verify that. It is 30 thousandths wider. This one is about 170, and I think the standard before was 140. So you do notice that when you bring it up. Uh, it's a little quicker to acquire, but then you have a little bit more slop, right? You can move that front sight around a little bit more, so your accuracy, your fine accuracy may diminish while your, your speed uh, to acquire the target may increase. It also seems like the line around the rear sight is a little, a little larger. Well, I guess it would be, wouldn't it? But I mean, a little, seems like it's a little brighter, like it goes down a little further. I don't know, that could be me. 450 rounds does not a um, serious test make, however, um, you know, I can often tell a lot about a gun with a lot less rounds than that. So I can tell you after 450 rounds today, this thing is a sweet gun. You know, it's a Glock. You know, if you hate Glocks, you're just going to hate this just as much as you hate every other Glock. And if you love Glocks, you're probably going to love it just as much as you love every Glock. Maybe more. Maybe they're answering some of your needs and your hopes with this pistol. Maybe they're not. I don't know. All I can do is tell you this is what I see, this is what they've done, and this is what I perceive. Uh, so I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to sell you <laughs> on the gun, and I'm not trying to turn you away from the gun. So it is what it is. 
I kind of dig it. I'll definitely be back out with it some more in the future. Okay, so there it is. There's my uh, part one and part two. This is part two. Uh, if you didn't see part one where it was all about the internals and guts and stuff, you can go back and look at that video. But this kind of wraps up my first detailed, thorough look at the new Glock 17 Gen 5. Uh, I hope there was something in it of interest to you. I hope you found answers to a question or two. And I thank you for watching.